to the next kind of encoding that is Upman encoding. I know that you would have learned this encoding technique, but again, let us refresh ourselves on what Upman encoding is and how it actually helps us to compress data. See, Upman encoding was uh, developed, this algorithm was uh, invented in 1952 by David Upman. And uh, this algorithm is used for data compression. Let's see how Huffman encoding works by an example. Let's take this particular string Mississippi and let's try and see how many bytes we need to actually hold this data. So the length of this word is actually 11 characters. So that is the length of Mississippi and we'll encode it using ASCII. So when you're storing it using the ASCII characters, so each character will be stored using eight bits. So the total number of bits required to store Mississippi is nothing but 11 star 8 that is 88 bits. Say if you want to save this particular string using ASCII which uses 8 bits to encode every character, individual character, we are going to require how many bits? It's 11 into 8. For each character we need 8 bits so it will be totally 88 bits. So let us go and apply Huffman encoding algorithm on this string. Let's see how many bits get reduced by compression. Okay, the very first step in Huffman code is we have to find the frequency of the characters in that particular string. So we have to take M and we have to find how many times M occurs in the string. How many times M occurs here? It's just one time. I, how many times I occurs in the string? I occurs for 1, 2, 3, 4. So I occurs 4 times. Yes, yes, how many times it occurs in the string? It's 1, 2, 3, 4. So yes occurs for 4 times. And uh, P, how many times P occurs in the string? P occurs for 2 times. So this is the very first step. You take the character and find the frequency of the character in the string. And then you construct the table. So I already constructed the table. Let me show the table here. So this is the table containing the character and the frequency of the character in this particular string. The next step is we'll sort this using the values here. We'll sort it in the ascending order. So we have M which is occurring once in the top, P2 and then I occurs for four times, S occurs for four times. So that is our next step. We sort it according to the frequency. Okay, the next step in Huffman coding algorithm is we have to go and construct the Huffman tree. I've got a visualization for constructing the tree. I hope that will be helpful for you. We mention all the characters M, P, I, S using the frequency in the ascending order. So M occurs for one time, P occurs for two times, I occurs for four times and S occurs for four times. So you see here we are just plotting them in the ascending order of their occurrence. The next step is we will find the pairs which is having the least value. So which is having the least value here, M is 1 and P is 2, we will merge them together and then we will create a new node. So now we have 3 that is nothing but 1 plus 2, 3 and then we have 4 and 4. After this step we have to find the next pair of values with the least value. So the next pair is it's 3 and this 4 or it can be 3 and this 4. So what I do is I will merge this 3 and with this 4 and create another node. So it is nothing but 3 plus 4, 7. So we are now left out with only two values that is 7 and 4. We will merge them so 7 plus 4 will lead to 11. So we have constructed the tree. The next step what we have to do is on the right hand side of the edges in the graph we have to mention a one so we give a one year we give a one year we give a one year on the left hand side edges what we're going to do is that we're going to give a zero so we just give a zero zero and zero so that's how you construct an Huffman tree so after this we are going to go and generate codes for each and every character say for instance m so what is the code for M is we start from the root and then we traverse to M. So it is 0, 0, 0. So M is represented using 3 bits. We will now go and find the code for P. What is the code for P? 
again you start from the root node we just traverse to p it is 0 0 1 now can you find the code for i the code for i is you start from the root and then you traverse so it's 0 and 1 i is represented using two bits so it's 0 and 1 what is the code for s it's just it's just 1 so after constructing the upman tree what you have to do is you have to go and find the codes for all the characters in your string so this is the next step so i am also given that as a table here so you can see the codes being determined from the upman tree now the next step is we have to determine how many bits we require to actually encode that particular string mississippi using these codes so let's go and determine the number of bits required for storing mississippi we know m is being represented as 000 so what is the length of this code length is 3 we know p is being represented as 001 so length is 3 i is being represented as 0 4 so length is 2 s is represented as 1 so length of the code is 1 so how many bits we require to actually represent mississippi so to represent a string like this wherein m p i s repeats many times how many bits we require so there is a formula for that is nothing but frequency into length of the code so what is the frequency it is 1 what is the length of the code it is 3 so 3 bits so m occurs once so how many bits we require to represent m in mississippi 3 bits and p occurs twice and what is the length of p 3 so it is 2 into 3 so how many bits we require to represent p in mississippi 6 bits so i occurs how many times 4 times and the length of the code is 2 so 4 into 2 is 8 bits and s occurs four times and the length of the code is one so the total number of bits to represent s is four so the total number of bits here is 21 so after compression we just need 21 bits to represent our data so initially without compression it was 88 so 88 minus 21 we get a savings of 67 bits so I think uh, some of you might be still confused about how this particular calculation happens. It's very simple. Say when you take Mississippi, so using the upman tree, we have determined how we represent M, P, I, and S. So if you want to store Mississippi, what will be the total number of bits required? So M we represent using three bits. I we represent using two bits. So it's plus two. And uh, S we represent using just one bit. So it's plus one, plus one i again we represent it using two bits s is just one so it's plus one plus one again this i we just represent it using two bits p will use three and then this p will use another three i will take another two so we need so many bits to represent this particular string so it is three plus two five six seven nine ten eleven twelve thirteen nineteen twenty one so that's what the calculation is so what is the total savings we achieve without compression we required 88 bits that is each required 8 bits 8 into 11 is 88 after compression we are representing mississippi using 21 bits so we are achieving a savings of 67 bits how can we get the original data back from the uh, coded information so that is decoding say for instance we get something like this how can you get the original data back from this code how can we decode that for that we need the Huffman tree so we should preserve the Huffman tree we should store the Huffman tree to decode whatever that was encoded so when you get a code like this what does that mean what does 000, 000 means it just means 000, 000 so it means m what is 01 means you traverse the tree 0 1 so it is i what is this one it is s what is this one again it is s what is 0 1 i s s i 
what is 0 0 1 it is 0 0 1 nothing but p so it is p p and what is 0 1 i so you'll be able to retrieve the data back the original data back from the encoded value by decoding it using the Huffman tree So that's how you compress and decompress data using the Huffman code and these are some of the compression techniques in databases. Hope you all have understood how compression techniques works in databases. The final thing is if you have many distinct values in your columns and uh, these values are totally unrelated to each other then it's better to leave it like that without encoding it. That's it. That's about compression techniques in databases. Hope you all have understood all the compression techniques. Thank you.